How does scoliosis affect your body? A lot of people have questions about how scoliosis can affect your body. And to understand the effects of scoliosis on your body, we kind of under, need to understand number one is what is scoliosis? And a scoliosis diagnosis typically means you have an unnatural or abnormal sideways curvature of the spine, either in the lumbar, thoracic, or cervical area. And this curve has a Cobb angle measurement of 10 degrees or greater with rotation, and typically the rotation is into the concavity of the scoliosis. And it, once this diagnosis has occurred, that we know that scoliosis can start to affect other things because the spine has a major function in the body itself. Number one is the spine acts as a main support structure for the body. It is what connects your pelvis or your pelvic girdle to your rib cage and your thoracic girdle. We call this your, your hips your arms and your torso, and it's all connected with your spine. The spine actually helps assist in gait with the pelvic, pelvic motion and proper motion within the spine. It also allows not only for support structure, but it also allows the torso to be flexible. That The spine has discs and allows the spine to actually to be move, to have movement within the torso to be flexible and allows for movement. The spine allows for the, the proper distribution of mechanical stress or compression of gravity over time, that the proper curvatures allow the spine to absorb forces, it allows us to stand upright. And you see the spine also does something that's very important. It also protects something called your spinal cord. And your spinal cord, which runs through your spine, is what connects your brain to the rest of your body. And your brain and your spinal cord will, will make up your central nerve system. And your central nerve system is like your master system of your body. It's what controls and coordinates all other systems and is constantly sending messages back and forth to make the body function properly. So once you start affecting the spine, you can start affecting all these different functions in a negative way. Scoliosis definitely affects the body visually. The number one thing that we tend to see in scoliosis is abnormal posture, is some type of postural um, deviation. It can be in the shoulders, I mean unlevel shoulders. It can be in the, in the alignment of your skull over your shoulders, meaning some type of abnormal alignment here in the shoulder uh, in the shoulder, shoulder angles. It can be an abnormal rib alignment or rib deformation. You're seeing rib humping or rib arching. You can see a lot of translation or leaning to one side. We can see abnormal waistlines. We can see abnormal hips. And we can see changes, like I mentioned, in the person's gait. This posture misalignment is, tends to be the hallmark feature of scoliosis. However, typically when we see postural misalignment, we know the spine inside is misaligned, so it can lead to other things internally that we don't always see visually in the outside. Because the spine is involved with almost practically every working system within the body through the central nerve system, that once you affect the spine, you affect this brain-body communication, and once you affect the brain-body communication through central nerve system di disruption, it can lead to many neurological dysfunctions. Obviously, it can lead to pain, neck pain, back pain, radicular pain, and this is more common in the adult stage because we know scoliosis, once you move into the adult stage, becomes compressive, and this compressive nature of scoliosis tends to lead to pain. It can lead to muscle pain because, because of the abnormal alignment, muscles are contracting, trying to balance the body with an abnormal alignment to gravity, and this muscle contraction can cause core muscles and strain muscles within the spine and within the entire body itself. It can cause issues there. It can lead, it can lead to problems into the lower extremities, especially as an adult. It can start affecting hips and knees and feet because once the spine or the body is abnormally aligned over the hips and pelvis, it can start to affect those joints. And a lot of times in adult stages, they may feel hip pain or knee pain or foot pain, they start getting like hip and knee replacements. And a lot of times it's a result of their spine not being properly aligned, causing these areas to deteriorate faster. It can lead issues with balance and coordination. A lot of times scoliosis patients, because their spine is not properly aligned, it can lead to issues with the way they stand and coordination and flexibility within the spine itself. It can lead to direct spinal problems like degenerative discs, degenerative spinal conditions, which unfortunately can be very progressive over time. The question I get asked a lot is, well, you have scoliosis, can it worsen? And unfortunately, the way you measure the severity of, the, of a scoliosis is by something called 
a Cobb angle. A Cobb angle is the standard of measurement for scoliosis, and it's only measured in degrees, meaning 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 4 degrees. Now, most patients will have more than one scoliosis or more than one curvature. Most patients will have three or more scoliosis, but most patients are just normally given their largest angle. Like I said, you have a 25 or 30 or a 50 degree angle. This angle is measured by the most tilted vertebra on the top side of the curve in reference to the most tilted vertebra on the lower side of the curve. And then these, this, this angle or this deviation is added together. Two bones that are parallel would be considered normal. When they start to tilt to each other, this tilting is what defines the Cobb angle. Scoliosis is always progressive, meaning it's going to worsen. It's going to worsen either rapidly as a child or it's going to worsen slowly as an adult, but it will worsen. And as it worsens, it goes from mild scoliosis, which develops very subtle problems, very subtle misalignments within posture, maybe not such, so, not such severe pain, to more moderate where we see more postural issues, more noticeable symptoms, to severe and very severe. Mild curvatures are typically curves that are less than 25 degrees. Moderate to severe, this is a normally a 15 degree window from 25 to 40. Once you break 40 degrees, the scoliosis is now considered severe. And I like to use a fourth category, which is something called very severe, which is curves that are 80 degrees plus. When we start getting to these rangings, the symptoms and posture misalignments are very obvious. So we normally recommend that every scoliosis be uniquely evaluated because it affects the body differently for every single patient and that every single patient understand how their scoliosis is affecting their body by where their curve is, the size of their curve, and how it's affecting the different nerves and muscles and tissues within the system. We definitely recommend being proactive regarding your scoliosis. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we say if you have scoliosis, the best way to take care of it, the best way to start managing it is right now. The only thing you do when you wait to see what your scoliosis is going to do, more likely you're going to wait to see your curve worsen. And once it worsens, you're going to wish you treated it sooner. And the bigger your curve becomes, the more severe it becomes, the harder it becomes to treat, and the more issues and more overt the symptoms become. So treating a curve early is always better than reacting to a curve that progresses over time. So we recommend proactive treatment, and we recommend that your spine be evaluated regularly if you have scoliosis to make sure that it's not worsening over time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.